Please don't go, I need you so, I'm begging seal to play. Please don't go. I am alive, right? Mm -hmm. If you talk to me, you are alive, right? Mm -hmm. What's the difference between me and you talking here, even though Steph is translating my side of the story, and you talking to your children on the telephone? There is one. It is the same thing. Mm -hmm. Now, let's take it a step further. If you are sitting in a room facing me and you could look me in the face and say, oh, hi, Steve. Nice to see you. And I would say, nice to see you, Lindy. How have you been? And you would say, I've been fine. How about you? And I'd say, I've been fine. And we would look at each other and smile because we can feel the vibrations coming off the other person. The truth of the matter is, Lindy, that the only thing that's happening in that encounter is that I'm there and you're there. That's all. We're together. And everything else is a mirage. It's like a painting or a movie. But the important part is that I'm there and you're there. And there's never going to be a time when your children are not there. However, it's up to you to make it real or not. If you can make it real enough, I would be standing here looking at you. And you would say, hi, Steve. And I'd say, hi, Lindy. If that happened, what would you think? Um, I don't know what I think. I don't would, know what I would do. <laughs> would you be terrified if you saw me? No. Would you just take it in stride? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good because mm -hmm. that indicates you don't have any fear of the unusual the unusual is merely a way of saying the dreams that are unrealized once the dream is realized in other words you've got a picture of it you can interact with it it is the usual the unusual are the dreams that are not manifested yet, but they still exist. They just haven't broken through the lineup of movies waiting to be watched. So you got all those movies sitting on your shelves, all those DVDs, and you go through them one by one and you watch each one. The movies you haven't watched yet are the ones that are still on the shelf waiting to be viewed. So no matter what happens, Lindy, whether you lose your children or not, it's impossible to lose yourself because you're the one that decides. You're the one that decides what movie you want to watch. Now, why would somebody watch a movie where they lost their children? because they had to find them again. Can you understand that? Mm -hmm. Can you understand that when you look at your children, you get too caught up in them as bodies and not as souls. And when you find them again, you are merely understanding that you can never ever be separated because you are souls who are united in your love for each other. Hmm. And that will never change. 
Perfect. If I told you you were trillions of years old, what would you say? I believe it. <laughs> would you say I'm a survivor? It. Absolutely. I've survived time. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> People have these shirts that say I'm a cancer survivor. You could say I'm a time survivor. <laughs> right. You have survived yeah. everything. If you've survived for this long, do you think you can survive anything coming at you? I can. And can you accept it? Yeah. Trust on me to be a little bit callous here. Because sometimes when we talk to people straightforward and we say to them, Imagine the worst thing that could ever happen in your life. They say, why are you asking me to think about something that I don't want to think about? I don't want to think about this because it makes me cry to even think about it. However, that's exactly why you need to think about it. Because if it makes you cry, something is wrong in paradise. Because in paradise... If you don't want to cry, that means you are resisting God energy. If you want to cry, that means you're allowing the tears to come and to be wiped away and the happy heart to return. Therefore, if you can face your worst fears without running away and penetrate to the essence of the story. You'll never be afraid again. And you will walk with your head held high. And right now, your fears are the only thing standing between you and a complete healing in your body. Do you understand this? Okay. Now, I have something to say that's a little bit strange and I haven't really said this before because I didn't really understand it until today. I am not a man on earth, even though I am here talking to you, I'm not talking to you from earth. I am talking to you from Paradise. Paradise is a state of mind and it follows you wherever you go once you accept it. It is like saying that you get to decide if you want to live in heaven or hell. And in hell, there are many, many versions. And it's always a place of fear and hatred. In paradise, there are many, many places. And it's always a place of love and acceptance. Can you understand that? Mm -hmm. So once you enter into paradise, Lindsay, you will never, ever be afraid again. Lindy. And... There will be no dues that you have to pay. You know, I got to do this in order to have this. I got to do this in order to have this. You will simply trust that God energy will bring to you everything that you desire. Because there is no blockage to 
your own willingness to take the ride. So when you say to God, God, I really want to have children. And God says, well, here, here's a couple. And you say, cool. And then you have to get up in the middle of the night and feed them. And you have to be there in the morning to get them up and feed them and get them to school. And you have to be there when they come home. You have to go talk to the teacher who says, so-and-so was being naughty. And you have to deal with the teacher. And you have to deal with when they grow up and say, Mom, why can't I smoke pot? Everybody else <laughs> says. Oh, my gosh. And then you have to answer that question. And so you go through life taking care of your children. And every step of the way, there are ups and downs, right? Mm -hmm. And still you love them mm -hmm. so much. Because you asked for them. And God said, here you are. Take care of my children that I'm lending to you for the time being. And be very, very careful with them. And don't worry. Because everything's going to be all right in the end. Everything's going to be all right in the end. If you did not have children, you would never know what it was like to have to get up in the middle of the night and feed them. Or answer their questions when they come to you and say, why am I not as smart as Timmy? Or why am I always the one that gets picked last for dodgeball? Why am I the one that nobody likes? Why am I the one that grew up and married an abusive husband? You have to be the one to carry the weight for God when your children come to you with these questions, right? Mm -hmm. Because they're all going to have issues, every one of them. And the answer is always going to be the same answer God gives to you. Everything's going to be all right. You're okay. Whatever you're going through is part of life. Life is ups and downs. It is only when you resist the ride that you begin to feel pain and suffering. And so everything's going to be all right, dear. You get to decide. And I will be here for you. Whatever you decide. However, remember this. That whatever you decide is what you get. And you can never, ever blame another person for what you get. Because you asked for it. And God gave it. And that's all there is to it. And so when you ask for children, you asked for everything that went into having them. And if you lose those children, it's because you asked for it. You asked for children. If you had never known them, you would never have lost them, right? Right. Everything comes and goes. And there's nothing that's really lost in eternity. It's merely an illusion of the earth realm. And it's there because you asked for it. You said, God, here I am in heaven and everything's good, but I'm bored shitless <laughs> because everything's good. Mm -hmm. And I can have anything I want. If I want a steak dinner, I snap my fingers and I got a snake dinner. If I don't want steak, I just want a big salad. I snap my fingers and I got a salad, right? Mm -hmm. If I want to have it served on a golden plate, I can. If I want to have it served on a silver plate, I can. 
So when you can have everything you want and it all comes to you, the minute you snap your fingers, you feel like the king of creation. Only problem is you're not the king of creation. You are the child of God. And that steak dinner didn't come from you. It came from God energy. And God energy was simply responding to your request for a steak dinner. So I'm going to send you to earth. Because you're bored here anyway. And when you get on earth. And you snap your fingers and you say, I want a steak dinner. I'll say, have patience. <laughs> <laughs> it might take five or six years <laughs> for it to arrive. But it will. And in the meantime, you're going to have to eat a lot of hot dogs. Because I want you to understand that you are not the creator of the universe. You are the one who creates your dreams, your hopes and dreams, and I'm the one who fulfills them. We are in a partnership. And if you can remember this, you will have no fear. You will say to yourself, well, I don't know why I'm complaining because God only gives me what I asked for. And what I asked for was a steak dinner. And he said to me, how would you ever appreciate a steak dinner unless you ate lots of hot dogs? So I'm going to send you lots of hot dogs and then I'll give you the steak dinner so that you can appreciate it. And when you get the steak dinner, you'll appreciate it. And that means you'll appreciate me. So when you look at your children, appreciate me. Because I, as a not Steve, this is God, what God would say. When you look at your children, appreciate me. When you look at a blade of grass, appreciate me. Because you created the idea. And I gave you the reality of your current experience. And so, allow your fears to dissipate. And trust on God energy. And little by little, you will find your whole life will change for the better. If there is such a thing as better, because we're all walking on an endless path. But you will find more peace and harmony in your life. And as you get more peace and harmony, you will find that your body will respond and say, cool, thank you for giving me a break. Because where do you think you are storing all that anger and fear? Literally right here in my solar plexus. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And it was solidifying there and calcifying and turning to stone. Because when we believe something and we don't trust on God energy. We, we, our beliefs turn to stone. And that's what happened with mankind. They decided to believe in heaven and hell and you might say it's written in stone and very few people have the courage to break the stone. Now you're being asked to break the stone, to let go of those calcified beliefs and open your heart to new possibilities. That's all. You don't have to do anything special except mm -hmm. believe in yourself, believe in yourself and not the rules that others are imposing upon you. Believe that you, are the one who decides what you want. And God energy is the source of your good experience as your dreams become your reality. 
Okay, is this making sense to you? Mm -hmm. Okay, what questions might you have or what? Mm -hmm. I wonder like, cause I like, I know as you get older or whatever, like your fears change from like when you're a kid. I think the thing I love about kids is that they're so fearless nothing's like nothing scares them and you just tell them like yeah you could do that you'll be great that's fine but then as you get older you're like oh my gosh what about this what about that and I just like don't know how I got all these fears and like how to just get rid of them I guess well you identified one fear losing your kids what's another fear uh -huh. Well, they're all kind of in the same category. It's all like surrounded around death, which is silly. Like I understand because I'm not really scared to die because that would be fine. But um, I just don't know how to like push that aside, I guess. Let's see. Steve says to you, my fears followed me into the afterlife. I had many, many, many fears, and they remained with me. So it is a good idea to address your fears before you leave the earth. So you take them out one by one, and you shake them out I'm like this. <laughs> shake them out like clothes, you know, or a rug. Shake them out. See what they look like. And then you say to yourself, well, this looks okay. This looks okay. What was I afraid of? What was I afraid of? And then you realize what you're afraid of. You were afraid that you have something in your backpack that you're not supposed to have that you stole from somebody and you're carrying it around in your backpack and you don't want to let anybody see it. So you don't tell anybody about your fears and you don't talk to people about the things in your backpack, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you did, they'd say, well, you stole that. Give it back. You're in trouble now. And the truth is that everything in your backpack that you carry around with you is just a fear of discovery. You're afraid people will discover the truth about you. You're afraid that they will figure out that you are the most beautiful human being that walks the earth. And then they will all be jealous of you. And so you hide yourself away. And you pretend that you are a beggar. And you walk around begging for crumbs. So nobody will suspect the truth that you are not a beggar. That you are a princess. And that your father in heaven is the most high, highest of all the high. And so you act like a stupid human who doesn't know who it is. In fact, you really do know who you are, but you're afraid to expose it to the world. And so you carry around this backpack with the truth inside it. And it gets pretty heavy 
after a while because you want so much to set it down and just let everybody see you in all your glory. And yet you have to keep yourself in disguise because if others saw you in all your glory, they would be so angry at you for exposing the truth that they would try to handcuff you and put you in jail or in a mental institution or just throw tomatoes at you. Can you understand this story? Mm -hmm. And so when you set the backpack down and you start pulling out your fears, your fears are just the stuff you use, the stuffing. I'm sorry, your fears are just the stuffing in the back because the backpack is empty, you see? Because you are too big and too glorious to fit into a backpack. And so you carry around your backpack full of fears, believing that you've stuffed yourself inside there because you don't want people to know who you really are. When in fact, you have never been concealed from anyone except all those other people walking around with their backpacks stuffed with their fears because they think that they can stuff themselves into the back so nobody else will know who they are so in reality there's a bunch of people walking around all of whom are exhibiting their true selves. However, nobody's aware of it as long as they're still carrying their own backpack because when they are confronted with the glorious light of the beauty of the soul, they are blinded and they cannot recognize their own faces in the face of everyone else. In other words, they cannot see that everyone is the same in this one sense, that everyone is glorious. And so each of them is pretending they're not glorious. And because they are pretending that they are not glorious, they have to rely upon their blindness to maintain the mirage. So when you set down your backpack full of fears and you see that the backpack is otherwise empty, you realize that you didn't stuff yourself in there after all. And then your eyes begin to open and you begin to see the glory all around you. And you look at people and you go, wow, you're glorious. And they say, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm just a human being trying to get by. And see, here's my backpack stuffed with my fears. And you say, I only see your glory. And they can't understand how you can see their glory. Until they put down their backpack and take out their fears and find out the backpack is really empty. And therefore, they no longer try to stuff themselves into a place where they cannot fit. So one by one, if you can be persuaded to set down your backpack, open it up and take out your fears and shake them out and look at them, you will eventually see that there was nothing at all in the backpack and you'll set it down forever and realize you cannot stuff yourself into 
a little box in order to maintain the illusion of hate and fear. And then you will be love incarnate. And you will be the one that people look at and say, wow, if she can do it, so can I. If she can do it, so can I. And they will say, how do you do that? And you will say to them, open your backpack and take out your fears, the things that you don't want to look at, things that nobody else is going to say to you. What's the worst thing you fear? Say to others, what's the worst thing you fear? And gradually, if they're courageous enough and trusting enough, they will open their backpacks and take out their fears and shake them out and see they are nothing. And when everyone has set down their backpacks and all the eyes are open, then there will be paradise on earth. Until then, once you set down your backpack, you yourself will be in paradise. And you will know it's only a matter of time before everyone else joins you there. Sense to you? That was great. <laughs> that was a good metaphor. <laughs> I love it. What else was I thinking about? So when I was younger, <laughs> I was told that I would be able to like, that I had a good connection with spirit through my dreams, but that it would transfer over into like awakened state. But that was it. That was all I was told. So I always have that on my mind. Like, how does that happen? In exactly the same way we just outlined to you. Okay. You examine your fears, shake them out, and realize that they are just illusions. And that these are the illusions that are keeping you from accessing your true destiny. So once you can release your fears, you will be safe in the arms of eternity. And when you're safe in the arms of eternity there will be no further blockages to you to your access to us and to god almighty because you will be restored to your connection through the heart the heart cannot open as long as it is so shut with the fibers of hatred and fear. If you can eliminate hatred from your heart and fear, you will be a portal for communication with us. And gradually, everyone will come back into connection and there will be a celebration at that time because humanity will be restored to its true destiny which is to be one with God and with each other and not to fear and not to live in fear but in harmony peace and harmony and then the earth will smile because the earth also will be restored to its good balance on trust on the Garden of Eden. And you will be protected from harm because there can be no harm in paradise. Because when you are in paradise, 
you understand that all of the gifts that are given to you are gifts of God energy and God energy cannot be lost. It will be here for you forever. And so when you go up a hill, you may come down the hill and you may come to a river and you may cross the river and you may go through the forest and you may find yourself in a meadow. What I'm talking about here is that each one of these is a gift from God. It is an experience. Every experience you have is a gift from God. And when you sit in judgment on your experience and say, oh, that was terrible. Oh, that was horrible. You're sitting in judgment on God. So do not think that you are the one that gets to decide for others. You get to decide for yourself. And if you sit in judgment on other people, you will apply the same standard of judgment to yourself. And you will hate yourself if you hate others. And you will love yourself if you love others. And if you love others, you will love yourself. And if you love others and yourself, you will love God. This is the way it works. And then you will be restored to your rightful place in the kingdom of God, energy. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Does it spur any more questions for you? Mm -mm, I don't think so. The fears you acquire through your life are the result of the belief in good and evil. Let go of the belief of good and evil. You see, children have learned that life is to be savored. It is for the living. And as time goes on, they are trained to believe that life is for the dead and that the world is full of dead men walking because they're afraid to live, because they have been told, if you do this, this will happen. If you do this, this will happen. If you do this, you'll go to hell. If you do this, you'll go to jail. If you do this, you'll go into a mental institution. If you do this, we won't love you anymore. If you do this, you will fail. You will fail, you will fail, you will fail. And so you develop fears that you will fail, that you will fail, that you will fail. You cannot fail as a human being. You cannot fail as a human being. You cannot but fail as a child of God. You can only fail if you believe it is possible. How can you fail in eternity? It's impossible. So as these fears grow, the weight in the backpack grows. And then you get so tired of carrying it that your body says, I'll help you out. Let's get a kidney stone. Or how about this? I'll give you cancer. Or how about this? You'll fall down and break your neck. And then you don't have to worry about failing because you're dead. Only problem is you're not really dead. And when you come back to earth, you'll pick up the burden again. God will hand you your backpack at the door. And he'll say, here's your backpack full of fears as you go back into the earth life. And the minute somebody says something to you that triggers one of the fears in your backpack, you'll remember it. And you'll be weighed down by it until you can figure it out. So figure it out, please, while you're mm -hmm. there so we all can be happy. Here's your backpack. I expect you to come back without it. <laughs>